Did you miss me? Good. I missed you. Hi friends, how's it going today? I hope you're having a wonderful February 1st. Yes. Um, I am so excited to be back. I am um, here. Hi, my name is Bailey Sarian and today is Monday, which means it's murder, mystery, and makeup Monday. Shana 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 if you are new here, hi, my name is Bailey Sarian and on Mondays I sit down and I talk about a true crime story that's been heavy on my knock in and I do my makeup at the same time. If you're interested in true crime and you like makeup, I would highly suggest you subscribe because I am here for you on Mondays, minus last month. Hey, up top. So I am so happy to be back. Sorry I disappeared on you. Um, you see, if you don't care about this, you could skip. But here's what here's what was going on. I took the end of December off because I felt like, for one, it was the holidays, and two, 2020 was just kind of, oh, just a lot. It was a lot, right? It was a lot. And I just needed a break. I just needed a break. Oh, I just needed a break. Just from everything. Not just from here, from every, <laughs> just a break. So I got a break. And then last month for the month of January, I was already planning to take it off. I just didn't get to announce it. But January, I spent January researching. I hired um, some extra help when it comes to researching. Uh, hi, Courtney. <laughs> She's incredible. She is amazing when it comes to putting in FOIA requests. She interviews. She has been helping me out. So for the month of January, we were just focusing on getting all of the research done ahead of time for the months to come. Sometimes you, I just needed more time with some stories to get all the information. So by taking the month off, I was able to like deep dive, get some thorough research done, the proper doc. Oh, it was just great. I appreciate you guys for being patient and majority of you very understanding. I'm ready, I'm ready. I got some good stories coming. A lot of the highly requested ones, definitely I'm doing some of those for you guys. I will stop rambling and let's get into it. Yay, 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 yay. I had a tiny, it was a speck, a little tiny blackhead right here, but I picked at it and I picked at it and now I have a hole in my face and the blackhead is still in there. Okay, Casey Anthony, she's all sorts of Casey Anthony, well, she was born March 16th, 1986. She was born in Warren, Ohio. She was one of two children to her parents, Cindy and George Anthony. Now, Casey was said to be very energetic, okay, and very intelligent from a young age. At some point, her family moved down to uh, Orlando, Florida, which is, you know, home of the home of the Disney Worlds, but they have Disney World, Sea World, Universal Studios. Casey's father, he was a, a, he worked as a cop and her mother worked as a home care nurse. And she had a brother named Lee who was four years older or is four years older. As Casey got into her teenage years, it was said by friends and family that she had a weird pattern of lying. I shouldn't say weird. It's just some people do that and we don't know why. But she had a pattern of lying, okay? She would lie about just the, the smallest things, that things just, that didn't even matter. Her parents would be like, hey, did you eat the leftovers in the fridge? And she'd be like, no, I didn't eat the leftovers. And they'd be like, well, then what are all those crumbs around your mouth? And she'd be like, I don't know. She was one of those people. She's lying about weird things. In high school, it was said that Casey, that's when she really started to completely push away from her family. Casey was once like the little girl who told her mom and dad everything. And then she became a teenager in high school and that's when she just completely cut everybody off. She wanted nothing to do with her, her family. And even though she still lived at home, her family really didn't know much about her. So Casey became that friend or that person who always had to have a boyfriend or just be in a relationship. She didn't enjoy um, being single or just on her own, or maybe she just didn't know how to be without a partner, but she always, she always had someone. Later on, when her parents would think back to Casey's high school age, they really had no idea who Casey hung out with, her friends, who she was dating, I mean, nothing. They tried to be involved, but Casey made it impossible for them to be involved because she wouldn't tell them anything, right? Casey would go out with her friends, she would party all night, and she just went through what one would call a wild stage, you know? The adolescent years. Casey was about to graduate high school and her parents wanted her to celebrate. That light turned off. And her parents, they wanted to celebrate 
their daughter's graduation. So they made some cards and they invited like a bunch of people over to have a little party for Casey. But literally the day before her graduation, her parents were like, um, hey, you know, uh, what's going on with your graduation? Where is it at? What time is it at? They're just trying to find information so they can attend her graduation, right? So they call up the school because Casey wasn't giving them any straight answers. So they call up the school and they're informed that Casey wasn't going to be able to graduate, that she was failing most of her classes. The parents, her parents, they literally had no idea. They had no idea that this was going on. And she didn't tell them. And she let them like plan this whole party and didn't sit. Okay, you know, okay. All right, so instead of trying to finish high school, Casey ended up dropping out of high school and soon after she got a job working at Universal Studios in the Hard Rock Cafe. Now after work, she would come home and she would talk to her parents about her coworkers and how um, her work day was, but overall she seemed really happy and she seemed to really enjoy her job. In January of 2005, that's when Casey met and fell in love with her boyfriend, Jesse Grund. Now, Oh, it just kind of seemed like uh, things were just really good for Casey. She enjoyed her job. She had this new boo thing that she really liked. You know, things were just looking up. Later that year, again, still 2005, Casey is 19 years old and she becomes pregnant. So she finds out she's pregnant and she's telling her friend that she doesn't want to keep the baby, but she wants to maybe give it up for adoption um, so she can continue her lifestyle and not have to worry about a kid. But months went by, Casey's still living at home and she doesn't like tell her parents what's going on. She's still carrying the baby. And it wasn't until she was seven months pregnant that Casey finally told her parents that she was seven months pregnant. Now, Casey is very petite. She's like, she's very, she's very petite. <laughs> okay. Casey said that she was wearing baggy clothes, loose fitting clothes. She's a petite girl. So it was like, she wasn't showing too much, but I think at the seven months mark, it was like, okay, she couldn't hide it anymore. So she had to tell her parents, she tells them. And she was telling them, I'm thinking about placing the baby up for adoption. But her parents were like, heck no, you are not putting your kid up for adoption. They were just completely outraged that she would even think about doing this. They forbade her from giving the baby up. So August 9th, 2005, Casey Anthony gave birth to her little baby daughter, Kaylee Marie Anthony. Casey, she said that uh, her boyfriend, Jesse, was Kaylee's father. And she said this pretty early on, but who the baby's father was or is, it was still a mystery. No, <laughs> nobody really knew who the father was. There were many theories out there as to who the father could be, but Cindy and George, they never pressed Casey to find out who the father was. Casey at one point told her mother that Kaylee's father was in a terrible car accident and died. It just seemed like you could never get a straight answer from her. Um, her stories flip flop and change often. I don't think it really matters who the father was, but just the fact that she lied, I think a lot of people kind of like, I don't know what they were doing. I don't know. This girl's just, <laughs> you can't trust anything out of her damn mouth. Now, for some reason, the family thought it was best to keep Casey's pregnancy a secret, which is totally fine. Like you don't have to tell anyone, but for some reason, they decided not to tell Casey's older brother, Lee, that she was pregnant and expecting a baby until a couple of days before she gave birth. And then when they finally did tell him, he was very upset. He was very angry with the family and he decided not to even go to the hospital when she did give birth because he was just so mad. So Lee, her brother, he was also living at home. So why they didn't tell him, I don't know. And this whole thing just caused like a major riff in the family. Like, why would you keep this major secret from me? She's my sister. They seemed somewhat close, her and her brother. I don't know the thought process behind that. Couldn't figure out why. Choices were made. So on New Year's Eve, Jesse, Casey's boyfriend and alleged baby's father, asked for her hand in marriage, saying that he wanted to, all of them, the whole family, to just be together and be a unit, be a family. Casey was excited, she loved him, but I think this is just an observation and an opinion, but I think deep down she knew that he wasn't the, the father and she was probably feeling some sort of way. So Casey has her daughter, she's newly engaged. And around this time, Casey enlisted the help of a nanny named Zanny or Zaneda Fernandez Gonzalez, but she called her Zanny. So she says. 
when Casey's parents asked her, like, hey, how'd you find the Zanny lady? What a wacky name, Zanny? Hmm. They didn't say that, but I would say that. They said, okay, how'd you find this Zanny? And Casey told them that it was an IT tech who worked over at Universal Studios named Jeff, who introduced her to his ex-girlfriend, Zanny, and he paid her to watch both his son and Kaylee. They're like, okay, that guy's paying for her to watch your kid? Okay. You know, they're just, okay. Which to me would be a red flag because it's like, who do you know who would pay for your childcare? Is that, that, that's not normal. Well, I don't have a kid. I don't, I just know childcare is expensive. Anyway, Cindy recalled Kaylee talking about Zanny and her dog, but they, like no one besides Casey had ever seen or met Zanny in the family. You want to talk about suspicion? Okay. So a DNA test was done to determine if Jesse really was the father of Kaylee and the lie detector test determined Jesse was not the father. Devastating news to Jesse who still wanted to work it out. But in May of 2006, Jesse broke off their engagement saying that Casey's behavior was becoming more erratic and she was becoming a different person. So they broke up and a little bit of time goes on and Casey is just ready to start dating again. So she starts, she starts going out there. She's like, I'm gonna go out and just thinking, I just want to dance. So she's going out and partying a lot with her friends. Now, while she's out, that's when she meets this guy named Tony, who was an aspiring DJ. That's gonna work out real well. So the two are dating and Casey would bring Kaylee over to his apartment that he shared with his roommates and they would spend a lot of their time there. Casey was still living at home during this time with her parents and Casey's parents, they helped take care of Kaylee. They gave her her own room, they fed her, they clothed her. They pretty much took care of Kaylee as, as much as they could. So according to Casey on June 15th, 2008, there was a heated argument happening within the family. The next morning, Casey left with Kaylee for a work trip to Tampa, Florida. She was angry and she did not want to come back home. So she packed like a bag as if she were going to stay for a while. The one thing we know for sure is on June 16th, 2008, that was the last day that Kaylee was seen alive. So Casey had told her family that she was going to be gone for a work-related trip to Tampa, right? Okay, so what really was going on was that Casey, she ended up leaving with Kaylee, right? She headed over to her boyfriend's apartment, but when she got there, Kaylee wasn't with her. When asked where Kaylee was, she always had an excuse. Um, she was either with the nanny or she was just somewhere else. She was always somewhere else, Kaylee. So Casey would end up staying at her boyfriend's house for a month, a month. And every time she spoke with her mom, cause her mom would call her up be like, hey, you know, how's it going? How's Kaylee doing? Where's Kaylee? Can I talk to Kaylee? Every time her mom would ask, Casey would have a different excuse. Like, oh, Kaylee's with the nanny Zanny or Kaylee's sleeping, she's taking a nap. And her grandparents, they were getting more and more concerned. Like I have, it's been a month. Where are you? And where's Kaylee? During this month vacation, I guess, Casey began partying more than ever. She participated in a sexy body contest at a local club, and she was out drinking with her friends what seemed almost every night. Again, her boyfriend, the guy that she was seeing, he was a DJ, so wherever he was at, that's where she was going. So at this time, MySpace was very popular, so she would be posting pictures of her out partying, dancing on bar tops. She's just like, yeah, yeah, that's what, she probably was doing. And then she also got a tattoo that said Bella Vita, which means beautiful life. You know, she was doing what well, like most people do in their early 20s, but where was Kaylee? So Casey's parents, they gave her um, their car for her to use cause she didn't have one. So she was driving this car around using it for quote unquote work related stuff and to make sure that Casey had like transportation, right? They're just trying to take care of their daughter. So they let her borrow the car. So one day Casey drives down to a check cashing place. And at this time, she literally made it there like on empty, empty, empty fumes. She was running on fumes, right? So she gets there and she runs out of gas, but she cashes her check. No, like this is all the money that she has. And she realizes like, oh my gosh, getting the car towed to a gas station is gonna cost me my whole check. I can't do that. So instead she decides to just abandon the car in the parking lot. <laughs> she doesn't realize how much her parents are helping her. And then she's just like slapping them in the face. Like, do you know, anyways. So she decides that's her best option. I'm just gonna leave the car here. 
So she does that. So some time passes and people uh, working in the check cashing place realizes like this car has been in the parking lot forever. You know, we have to call the tow truck and get it, get it removed. So they do that. They get the car towed out of there, right? And it goes to the pound where they call up George, Casey's father, and they say, hey, you know, we have your car, it's impounded. Um, this is the vehicle and this is where it's at. George, for good reason, is like, what the heck? Why is Casey's car there? You know, like, okay. So George goes down to pick up the car and figure out what the heck is going on, right? He gets to the pound. He pays the money to get the car out. And then the guy who's working at the pound takes him out to the car. So the two of them are going out there together. He gives him the keys. George says that he opens up the car door and he says that both of them got a whiff of a pungent smell just coming from the car. And the worker said that it smelled like a dead body. Now, I personally have never smelled a dead body before, which I think is probably, yeah, is a blessing. But based off of everything I've read and researched, it sounds like you can't mistake the smell of a dead body. It's a very distinct smell. Like you can't confuse it with something else. So George ends up taking the car home, pissed. Him and his wife, Cindy, are pissed because first of all, why is the car in the pound? They have to pay the fees to get the car out. Now George is like, dude, the car smells like a dead body. So he comes home, he tells Cindy, hey, Come here, come smell the car. So Cindy comes out, she smells the car. She agrees that it's a pretty intense, foul odor. They pop open the trunk and they see a trash bag. So Cindy said that they didn't open the trash bag. They just threw it away. Then she said that she used an entire bottle of Febreze on the inside of the car. They left all of the car doors open to help air it out. This is according to Cindy. So again, naturally, George and Cindy are just super pissed. Not even super pissed, they're furious. You know, why did she just ditch the car? Why didn't Casey say anything? Does she not have a car? How is she getting around? Where's Kaylee? I mean, all these thoughts are going through their head and Cindy just wanted answers. So Cindy tries to get a hold of Casey, but she's not having any luck. So her best bet is to go find her. Last she heard, she was at her new boyfriend's house. So Cindy goes down there to the boyfriend's apartment. Now, when Cindy gets to the boyfriend's apartment, she knocks on the door, right? Okay, so she goes inside. She's like, where's Casey? And they take her inside to the living room. Cindy says that she looks around and she just notices a bunch of drug paraphernalia all around and it was morning. So they're just sitting there getting high and it wasn't even lunchtime yet. And Cindy's like, she walks in like, what are you doing? Where's Kaylee? Why isn't, where is she at? Why isn't she here? And then Casey told her mom that Kaylee was with the nanny Zanny. So Cindy's like, okay, I can't take this anymore. I'll, I can go pick her up. Where is she? I haven't seen her in months. Where is she? Casey's just getting more and more defensive as her mom is there questioning her in front of her boyfriend and her boyfriend's friends. Let me just do this liner really quick and I'll be right back because I can't do it. Cindy tells Casey, come on, you're going home with me. Grabs her and tells her that they're going home. Casey was feeling super irritated because she just stormed into her boyfriend's like, how could you? That's so embarrassing, mom. In front of my DJ boyfriend. Cindy and Casey go back to the family home and Cindy calls 911 to report Casey for stealing the car, then abandoning it, then abandoning it. <laughs> Cindy ends up calling 911 three different times. The first time she calls 911, she's like, this is a quote, quote, I have someone here who I need to be arrested in my home and I have a possible missing child. I have a three-year-old who's been missing for a month, end quote. On the phone call, Cindy says that Casey needed to be arrested for stealing her car and her money. So Cindy is just waiting for the police to show up. She's pacing around the house and that's when she overhears the conversation between Casey and her brother, Lee. So she's listening in. Casey tells her brother that she met Zanny the nanny at the park to give her Kaylee. And when she arrived, Zanny held Kaylee close to her, pushing Casey away, saying that she was taking Kaylee away from her and would not be giving her back. So Casey is telling this to her brother. Her mom overhears it 
calls 911 again, thinking that now there's been a kidnapping that's taken place. On the phone, Cindy is demanding to speak to an officer and says that she had just learned that Kaylee was taken by her babysitter and has been missing for months. I'm sorry, for a month. So on this call, she says, quote, I told you my daughter has been missing for a month and I just found her today, but I can't find my granddaughter. There's something seriously wrong. I found my daughter's car today and it smells like there's been a dead body in the damn car, end quote. So while she's on the phone with 911, Cindy is trying to push Casey to hop on the phone and talk to the 911 dispatcher. And she's growing frustrated because Cindy is... Th- on the phone, worried, panicking, trying to figure out where her granddaughter is. And Casey was calm. She seemed irritated and annoyed that her mom was doing this and making such a big deal out of it all. And she kept telling her mom that she didn't want to talk to police. She didn't want, she didn't want any of this. Now Cindy is pushing her and pushing her. Finally, Casey gives in and speaks to the 911 dispatcher saying that she knows who has her daughter, but the phone number she had for the nanny was a number that was no longer in service. But earlier that day, the nanny let her speak to Kaylee and Kaylee was okay. Casey told the dispatcher that Zaneda Fernandez Gonzalez was the name of the nanny that had Kaylee. Casey said that she had spoke to the nanny on July 9th on the phone and then again on July 15th when she allowed her to speak to Kaylee. Casey told her brother Lee that she had been communicating with Zanny through MySpace and was getting instructions from Zanny on how to get Kaylee back. Casey said that Zanny told her she would get her daughter back on Kaylee's birthday. To Cindy, it's just like, this is the dumbest story I've ever heard. Like, why are you not more concerned about your daughter? So police finally arrive. And then when they arrive, they ask Casey to take them to the last place that she saw Zanny. So she takes them to the Shawgrass apartments and identified which apartment was Zanny's. Casey said that was where she dropped off her daughter and the last time and place that she had seen her. Casey provided a description of Zanny. She was 25 years old. She was five foot seven, 140 pounds, black hair, perfect teeth from New York and a 10 like whatever that means, which is just like a really weird thing to mention in a description about someone who took your kid, but okay. Casey tells them that Zanny the nanny, she was a coworker of hers at Universal Studios who was born in New York in the month of September. She moved to go to the University of Florida. She said she was mixed. She was black and Puerto Rican. Of course, a white girl trying to pin it on a person of color. So police go up to the apartment in which Casey said that Zanny lived. So they knock on the door. No answer, you know? They're peeking inside. They're trying to look in the window and it doesn't look like anyone lives there. So they go down to the landlords and they ask if they can have a record as to who lived there, a history, something, right? And they told police that no one had lived in that specific apartment since March. Hmm. Interesting. They ask if they can pull surveillance video from the parking lot from the day when Casey dropped Kaylee off. So they ask for their surveillance video from the parking lot and it shows anyone coming and going from the specific apartment. And they never saw this woman Casey described over there ever. They never saw, no one was there. They would have caught someone on tape and at least they would have caught maybe Kaylee, but nothing. So police are like, hmm, ain't this some shit? They now knew that Casey was lying for sure. So they start looking more into Casey and her story. So they're asking just a little bit about about her. Casey told police that she worked at Universal Studios. So they did some digging around and they discovered that Casey actually, she didn't work at Universal Studios. In fact, she never worked at Universal Studios. So what was she doing with all this time, you know? Hmm. Police uncover this information, but they didn't tell Casey that they knew this, which I love because they put her on blast. They took Casey down to Universal Studios and asked Casey to take police to her boss. And Casey acted as if she did in fact work there. I think she had she had worked there for a brief period of time. So I shouldn't say she never worked there, but she had gotten fired long ago. But she was telling everyone that she still worked there, okay? Casey's just acting like she does work there and she walks in she walks past security into the employee entrance it wasn't until they got lost in the maze of offices just going like er, er, like she was just taking them in circles that she finally just stops she turns around and she tells the cops i don't work here <laughs> there's like a video footage of it oh it's so beautiful i love it when people get caught in a lie like that like oh 
got you. They uncover these lies. Casey was arrested on July 16th. She was charged with neglect of a child, obstruction of justice, and making false statements. So Cindy, Casey's mom, sits down with police and she talks to them about the car. When she got it back from the pound, it had trash in the trunk and a box of pizza with maggots. And she tried to dismiss the smell as rotting pizza. She's like, no, no, it, it, it was just rotting pizza. Rotting pizza smells like just dead. So the detectives tried to knock some sense into her that she knew what that smell was. She said it on tape on the 911 call. So they're pushing her like, are you sure, you know? But Cindy kept trying to take back her statement saying, nay, nay. It was a rotting pizza. So the car gets taken in for police to search. So they bring in one of those trained search dogs that can confirm a scent of a, a dead body. So they bring in this dog, dog sniffing around and guess what? The dog starts going crazy when it smells the trunk. Also, they see that on the bottom of the trunk, there was a small staining happening, which was the size of a small body. I'm laughing because of like how obvious this is, right? The dog smells the body. They see like a stain. It doesn't smell like a body, but it's the size of a body. Also the mom calling 911 being like, it smells like a body. All signs are pointing to there being a body inside the car, right? It's just so obvious. They take the carpet out of the trunk of the car and they tested it and it confirmed to be decomposition of the body as well as very strong chloroform. Also, there was hair in the trunk of the car. So they did DNA testing on the hair through um, mitochondria. When they tested the hair, it came back saying that the hair was either Cindy, Casey, or Kaylee's hair. The hair was longer than Casey's and it was untreated, unlike Cindy's, meaning it had to be Kaylee's. The hair also had what was called a decomposition band. And this is a dark band that can appear on the hair when the body is de decomposing. Investigators also seized the family computer in hopes to find any type of evidence. So when they're looking through the computer, that's when they find or discover that someone had been using the computer to Google search, quote, how to make chloroform, end quote. All right, baby, case closed, right? What more do they need? Well, I'm sorry, sorry, where's Kaylee? I'm jumping the gun here, but all signs are pointing to Casey. I mean, it's so obvious. So they ask Cindy, hey, you know, on your computer, we found that someone was searching for chloroform. Can you tell us about that? And Cindy said that she had been searching for chlorophyll on the computer because her dogs were eating bamboo in the backyard and she wanted to make sure that it wasn't toxic. And during her search, it pulled up chloroform she saw it and she clicked it. This is what Cindy was saying. Chlorophyll is what makes a plant green. So I don't know why she would be searching for chlorophyll and not just something simple like, is bamboo toxic to dogs? So Cindy, your, your story is not making any sense here, babe. Through some dig more digging around, they realized that Cindy wasn't even home when the computer search was made. And it was proven that Casey was the only one home when that search was made, not Cindy. So why was Cindy trying so hard to cover Casey's ass? It just wasn't making any sense to, to investigators. No, I'm sorry. It was making sense to them because it was obvious what was going on. Cindy didn't want to like rat her kid out for some odd reason. Well, I could get it, but at the same time, I can't get it. So Cindy, she goes down to the jail to visit Casey. While she's there, she's asking Casey, what does Zanny look like? Can you tell me what she looks like? Because I don't even know what she looks like. Do you have photos of her? If the police come to me and ask me to pick her out of a lineup, how do I identify Zanny? She needs to know. Right, like it makes sense. So Cindy tells Casey, you know, police told me that you couldn't even point out Zanny from a lineup. Casey was getting really irritated with her and just completely shut down. Well, in fact, an officer earlier on did show Casey a photo of a woman by the name of Zaneda Gonzalez, AKA Zanny. And Casey was not able to recognize who they were showing her in the photos. So Zaneda Gonzalez, she was a real person, but whoever Zanny the nanny was, she simply did not exist. They didn't think that she existed. A couple months down the line, Zaneda, the real one, she filed a defamation lawsuit against Casey. 
Beautiful. Good for her. When Cindy and George visit Casey in jail a month after she had been there, they inform her that people are saying Kaylee is dead, to which Casey rolls her eyes and says, quote, surprise, surprise, end quote. Cindy asks Casey what her gut is telling her right now. And Casey says that she believes Kaylee is not far. So Casey ends up hiring a man by the name of Jose Bays as her legal attorney, who then writes a letter to the sheriff's office about Casey's willingness to cooperate with law enforcement law enforcement and soon following after that a court judge sets Casey's bail at $500,000. Casey's bail was paid and she got an electronic monitoring device and she was released. So Casey headed back to her parents' home where she would be staying. And at this point, the media had gotten hold of this whole story and they were going berserk. So at her parents' house, it was just filled with media. They were all outside waiting like on the lawn, on the driveway, just, but the public was outraged and furious that Casey was able to be released and go home. There were countless altercations outside the family house and constantly media around. It was not only upsetting to the family, but the whole block because it turned into this just chaos on their street. Now on August 29th, Casey was arrested again for something that had nothing to do with the case. This is why nobody likes her because she's an idiot. She was arrested because she was caught writing four checks worth close to $650 without the person's permission. This time Casey's parents post a $500,000 bond and she's released again from county jail into their custody. I don't know why her parents liked her so much. She didn't seem like that great of a dollar daughter, but they kept bailing her out. And I don't know, man, I don't know. <clears throat> now what? On December 11th, 2008, less than a mile from the Anthony family home, a utility meter reader was out working and he was about 20 feet off of the road. He saw what seemed to be a skull. He poked at it with a stick and then realized that it was indeed like a real skull and he calls 911. The man who found the remains had tried to report this, the, these findings to police three different times. He found it a couple months prior and when he had called about it, you know, someone needs to check this out, he wasn't taken seriously and was told that someone was going out to the area to check it out but nothing ever came from it. So that's when he went out there himself, like up close to it and again called 911. So this time a team goes out there and they find the remains. They find the skull, they find, um, well, okay, look. They find a skull and the skull had duct tape on it and nearby was a bag which included the rest of the bones and then a baby blanket with Winnie the Pooh and Piglet on it was in, like in another laundry bag. They knew immediately it was the bones of a child. On December 19th, police, they came forward and announced that the DNA testing confirmed that the remains belonged to Kaylee Anthony. So the police, they get a warrant for the Anthony house and they discover that Kaylee's room had been a Winnie the Pooh themed room, which would align with the blanket that they found um, with her body. In the house, they also discovered a twin bag to the white one that they found at the scene where Kaylee's remains were also found. It was a laundry bag and it was sold only in pairs. And the Anthony household contain just one of the pair to the bag that was found at the scene. These two very specific items made it clear whoever killed Kaylee, whoever it was, we just may never know, was not a stranger and would have had access to the family home. Casey now was being charged with first degree murder. Now, if any of you remember this, cause I remember when it was all over the news, you could not avoid this story. Cause it was like, what the heck? Ooh, it was bad. It really took a toll on the family though. It seemed like, this is an opinion, but based off the facts I presented, it seems like Cindy, she was like ride or die for Casey and she was not gonna let her spend the rest of her life in prison and take responsibility for what she had done. Meanwhile, George, um, Casey's father, he wasn't taking it so well. He seemed to be the only one in the household with a level head. He knew that Casey was responsible for it. When he would bring it up to his wife, Cindy, she would tell him no, no, like she just didn't want to admit the truth. The media is just ripping apart this family. People were just being very nasty towards their parents. Cindy may have deserved it, but poor George, he really didn't. Anywho, but in January of 2009, George, he wasn't doing well and he was staying um, in a hotel and he was mixing drugs and alcohol and someone had 
called the police to do a wellness check. And that's when police found him in a hotel, not doing well. Like he tried to kill himself. I, yeah, I guess he, that's what he was doing because he wrote a, leng a lengthy suicide note that he seemed to have written like on the hotel piece of paper, you know? And he ended it with, quote, Kaylee, here I come. He seemed to be taking it the hardest. And it's just sad he got to a point where he just wanted to end it because he just couldn't take it anymore. Anyways, but they found him and he was, he was safe, but that happened. May 24th, 2011, the trial begins. George and Cindy would not have normally been allowed in the courtroom because they were witnesses technically, but they were allowed to be present because they were the grandparents. They were allowed to be there if they promised to show no emotion. Now they were heavily scrutinized because they showed no emotion in court, but many people forgot that they had been asked not to show emotion. And if they did show emotion, they would be asked to leave. I'm losing my voice. Casey, obviously completely lying throughout the investigation. There was no nanny and there was no job at Universal Studios. So the question became, how do you live a lie like that? Casey said that when she was eight years old, her dad began to molest her and she learned to lie at a young age because of it. Now, George took the stand and he said that he did not molest his daughter. Their proof? Casey didn't go to the gynecologist until she was seven months pregnant and that was the first time she had ever been to one. So can you imagine hearing for the first time that your daughter is trying to pin the whole thing on you, making up that you molested them? Uh, you're killing your child? Absolutely, I mean, the, how, why? Well, but then lying that your your father is molesting, I'm like whispering, so I don't know who's listening. Someone might be listening. But the fact that you lie that your father molested you? I don't know how she how she could sit there and say that. And her father is watching like, this is new news to me. Gosh, it's just absolutely disgusting. Did I tell you I hate her? Cause I really do. I don't support hitting or beating your kids at all. But if I watched my grown ass adult child lying on the stand like that, I'd beat her ass. And that's a fact. <laughs> Anyways, again, he wasn't allowed to show any type of emotion in court, but this tore him up. It was a shock to him. He didn't know that this was the plan. So it was just heartbreaking. Not only did he lose a granddaughter, but now he's losing his daughter and his wife because his wife was just accepting that this, I, I don't, <laughs> I don't know. It's a personal opinion, but I just don't believe that it happened. I really don't, uh-uh, nope. So the prosecution came and they gave their theory. Casey Anthony killed her daughter by using chloroform to knock her unconscious, then used duct tape to cover her mouth and block her airways. Casey then wrapped Kaylee in her favorite blanket, put her body in the trunk of her car. She then went to her boyfriend's that next day. And then the next day they believed that she took Kaylee's body out into the woods in a trash bag. Now the defense's theory was that Cindy was at work and George and Casey were looking for Kaylee. They said that George found Kaylee drowned in the pool and yelled at Casey, look what you've done. Your mother will never forgive you. And then George helped her dispose of the body by wrapping Kaylee in plastic like he would do with their pets when they died. Now there was another theory, which is just Cindy's theory. Now Cindy believed that Kaylee accidentally drowned in the pool while Casey was watching her. Casey must have freaked out and tried to dispose her, uh, but didn't realize what she was doing. <laughs> I hate her. Poor George. I hope George is okay. Now, George had his own theory. He believed that Casey was giving her Xanax, AKA Zanny the nanny. You see, some people used to call, I don't know if they still call Xanax Zanny or Zans or Zan, whatever they call it, but I remember there was a time when like Zanny, I'm gonna take a Zanny tonight, you guys. I just wanna let loose and take a Zanny. So it makes sense, right? So George believes that Casey was giving her Xanax and then calling the Xanax like Zanny the nanny because it would help her sleep and you know, babysit babysit while Casey went out and partied, hung out with her boyfriend and gave her the freedom to do what she wanted. He thinks that he gave her too much Xanax and she just didn't wake up. George is the only one around here with some goddamn common sense. Zanny, I'm gonna take a Xanax. I'm just like, where the hell was she getting Xanax from? 
DJ boyfriend. I bet you. I think there was another theory out there by like the media and just speculation. And I kind of, I could see this kind of being true. I think she was probably using um, chloroform to knock Kaylee out. And then maybe she like, but I don't understand why she put duct tape around her. It's one thing to knock your kid out with chloroform um, to go out, I guess. Okay. But then to like duct tape, I just... I got so many questions and no answers, okay? So the Casey Anthony trial was a shit show. I mean, Casey's team was blaming anyone and everyone for what happened to Kaylee. It was messy. It was petty. Anyone with brain cells who was watching the trial, paying attention, knew it was Casey. Jurors were talking about the case outside of court, which is a huge nay-nay, okay, you don't do that. But one juror was selling information to an online blogger for some reason, Casey's team was going hard trying to point the finger at her father and include him somehow. Like she really had something against her dad. It was really sad. There was nothing tying him to the crime, but it turned into a circus and facts were getting confused with opinions because Casey's team was just pointing the finger. So then the trial, it focused on things that didn't matter for far too long. They weren't even looking at facts anymore. It was just trying to clear the father's name, trying to disprove everything that Casey's team's throwing at them is a mess. The trial, it goes on for a very long time. And on July 5th, after about 10 hours of deliberation, the jury comes back and they have an answer. Many of you may remember this day, cause I certainly do. I certainly, I was like, she's guilty. She's guilty. I can't wait to see her face when they read guilty. I was sitting there just like, yay, bye bitch. So the jury comes back. Casey Anthony is not guilty. Not guilty. What? People lost their shit. I remember heads were exploding everywhere, okay? People were, <laughs> people were furious. You know why? Because they had distracted and watered down the whole story, focusing on Casey's father and like what he may have done to her and how it just wasn't her fault. Casey is convicted of four, four misdemeanor charges of giving false information to a law enforcement officer. Judge Perry sentenced Casey to one year in county jail and $1,000 in fines. Now at that point, Casey had served three years already. So she got credit plus, additional credit for good behavior. And with that being said, she was good to go, baby. You're free. Casey would be released from prison on July 17th, 2011. That's it. That's the story. If you remember watching this on TV, like I was, we were livid. Unbelievable. It still is. The jurors in that case, they were scared because they were receiving death threats of their own. They kept the jurors name, names quiet for X amount of time. But after that, it was just like, here are their names, everyone. Ooh, it wasn't good. I feel like they just should have left the jurors alone and gone after like Casey directly, but I guess that's just me. So after the trial, it came out that Casey had filed for bankruptcy twice and was unable to pay her lawyer, Jose Bays. So what happens when you don't have money to pay your lawyer? Well, she paid him in sexual favors. Someone even reported seeing Casey completely naked in his office and she accidentally like walked in on it and they were like, oh shit. It's not illegal to have sex with your lawyer, okay? You can and, and you, you can, but it's certainly unethical. I guess they were having a little bit of a relationship. I don't know if there wasn't much facts about their relationship. It was more like just opinions about what was going on between the two of them. But I think it was pretty clear that she was, having sex with him and he must have loved it so much that he helped her be free. I don't, I don't know. Anyways, so what happened with the Zaneda Gonzalez defamation case you ask? Well, the judge tossed that one right out. I don't know you guys, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know. I don't know. In 2017, it was revealed that there was a search on the family's computer for foolproof suffocation. And that only could have occurred while Casey was at home. It was also discovered that 48 hours before Casey was arrested, her internet history was deleted, which is just classic suspicious behavior. Also in 2017, Casey did an interview. You can watch it online. I'll tag it down low. But Casey said that she remembers waking up that morning and saying goodbye to her mom and then going back to sleep. When she woke up, Kaylee was missing. Her story changes again. Kaylee's now, it, she was missing. 
Her mother theorized that Casey might have had a seizure like she was known to do. <laughs> and during her blackout, cause she's having a seizure, she blacks out. Kaylee must have died and she was, they can't get their story straight, okay? Why don't you just come out and say you did it? We're sick of the shit. Also in this interview, she said that she's okay with herself and that she sleeps good at night. In 2017, Kaylee would have been 12 years old. And when the interviewer asked Casey what she thought Kaylee would be like at 12 years old, Casey said, quote, a total badass. And she laughed saying she'd probably listen to classic rock, play sports and not take shit from anybody. Casey took up photography when she was released and not because she wanted to take pretty photos or whatever, but because she wants to become a private investigator. She may be one now, I don't know, because this was back in 2017. Casey said that one of the reasons she's so good at her job as a PI is because she learned firsthand how to research people's backgrounds, search for information, and gather all the information needed. The interviewer then asked, do you really think that your father had something to do with it? And Casey said that her father had Kaylee when she saw her last and that she wasn't sure what happened after that. Again, stick with your story, girl. Literally a fish out of water, just flip flopping all over the place with her stories. George has consistently denied all these allegations. Casey said that she doesn't give a fuck about what anybody thinks about her and she never will. Hmm. And that, my friends, is the awful story about Casey Anthony. She got away with murder and it was messy too. I guess what surprises me the most with this whole story is that like nobody's kicked her ass. I mean, like I'm not saying that anyone should. Please don't, let's be an adult. But I'm, I was waiting for like a article to come up or something about somebody kicking her ass. I don't know. You know what's even more irritating? Like if you watch the interviews with her, she has like this snarkiness, this, this overly confidence cause she got away with murder. She can get away with anything. And that's how she kind of acts. She has a little picture of Casey on her, on her like mantle. It's like, bitch, take that off. You don't deserve that. She's never come out and apologized to her father about lying. Her father said that he doesn't have really any relationship with her. Cindy still ride or die for her daughter. Yeah. And I think this is a perfect example of what can happen when you don't hold your kid responsible, accountable for their actions. It just seems like she got away with whatever she wanted in life and nobody ever disciplined her over that. And it shows. I hope she lives a very miserable life. I'm sure one day, and I hope nobody gives her a book deal, okay? But I'm sure one day she's gonna come out with her, her own little version of uh, the OJ book, if I had done it. I bet you she will. She's gonna need money at some point, cause she's a loser. And I hope no one hires her. I just hope she has a very awful life. I could say that because I hope she does. I would love to hear your guys' thoughts down below. Do you think Casey was innocent? If you do, Get the hell out of here. Okay, no, no. Rest in peace to poor, poor little Kaylee Anthony. She died because her mother is a selfish bitch who probably won't ever change because why should she? Everything's been working out for her this far, you know? I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. I missed you guys. Thank you for hanging out with me today. I appreciate you. Thank you. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. You make good choices. Let me know who you want me to talk about in future Monday videos. And I'll be seeing you guys later. Missed you. You know what? I think she lies so much that she actually believes it. I mean, that's the only way you could probably go to sleep at night is if you truly believed your own lies. I mean, how else do you sleep at night knowing you murdered your own child so you could party? Hmm? 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 Can you let me know? Hmm. <laughs>